All right, so what I'd like to do is show you how you could use Minitab Express as well as the TI graphing calculator to construct confidence intervals similar to the ones that um, I showed you in this week's material. So um, this um, PDF that's open right now is the PDF that's in Blackboard for the confidence intervals um, for the population mean using the normal distribution and z-scores. So what I've done here is, um, you know, this is the one on Burger King, you know, um, it's about uh, regarding um, hamburger weights of its pre-cooked hamburgers. Um, I did this question using the defining formulas, you know, using the error formula, which is critical z-score times sigma over radical n. Remember, sigma over radical n, this little piece right here of the formula, that's called the standard error. So it's really the standard error times a critical z-score. So you, you crunch the error of this confidence interval, and then you take that error, and you add it and subtract it to the sample mean. Now the sample mean was 0 .248 that was given in the question, and then when you play this game and crunch these values, you get a confidence interval. Um, it's not a terrible procedure, but it takes a little bit of time to do. This entire procedure, believe it or not, constructing the error and then adding and subtracting that error and creating this confidence interval for the mean can all be done in Minitab with the push of a few buttons. So the, um, the confidence interval menu is in this inference menu. Now we've already made use of this probability menu and I believe um, this summary menu for summary statistics. But the inference menu, if you click it down, you'll see it has things called one sample T, one sample Z, and one proportion. So the one sample means there's one set of data. Underneath that, you'll see it says um, two sample, or two proportions, or pair. This, would, this is when you have two sets of data. All right, so right now we're working with one set of data, and we're working with z-scores, the normal distribution. So I'm going to select this. All right, so notice now a picture brain. It says, okay, what do you got? Sample data in a column. That, you know, that would be you have data, raw data in a column down here, which we don't have. Instead, we have the summarized data. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, we have a sample of 100 hamburgers. Somebody calculated the population standard deviation for us and the sample mean of 2.248. So we actually have the summarized data. So I'm going to check that box. And notice the inputs change. So my sample size was 100 hamburgers. The sample mean was 0.248. And then the known standard deviation, that's the population standard deviation, that's 0.03. Now, this menu also simultaneously works on a hypothesis test. Now, you may remember what hypothesis testing is all about from Statistics 1. You know, if not, don't worry, we're going to cover it in detail in um, chapters that are coming. Um, believe it or not, you're going to learn probably about 10 or so different hypothesis tests. Uh, for those of you that have had me in the past, you probably learned about three or four different hypothesis tests. So I'm not going to check this right now because we're not doing a hypothesis test. However, the thing we should do is we should go to the options menu and see what we got going on here. This is where you change the confidence level. So, you know, right now this confidence is a 95% confidence interval, and that's the default setting. But sometimes you might have to change that to a 90 or a 98 or a 99 or what have you, so you may have to change this. This display output here, um, these values notice they grayed out, and that's because the hypothesis test menu is not checked. If this was checked, these would un gray and then you'd be able to, to get some output in terms of a picture. This, this other option here, of alternative hypothesis, that has to do with confidence intervals as well um, and it also has to do with hypothesis testing. Um, so we're going to leave this on not equals to for now and we'll discuss this option more. So for now just leave it alone and um, always make sure it's on not equals to. So once you have this menu set up, there's not much to it, you say okay and the output window here with a click of a few buttons, it summarizes what you gave it we gave it a sample of 100 hamburgers. There's the mean. Here's the standard error for the mean, 0 0.003. That comes from this chunk right here, 0 0.03 divided by the square root of 100. Sigma over radical n. It's called the standard error for the mean. So the error in the confidence interval is a critical z-score times the standard error. Notice your 95% confidence interval, 0 0.242, 0 0.254 approximately. And that's the answer down here. So notice this whole scenario, what it does is it crunches the confidence interval for you. It does all this work. The only downside to using this is that it does not tell you what the error for the confidence interval is. In other words, that 0 .00588, that's the error in the calculation. 
it gives you a value of the standard error, and remember the standard error is called sigma over radical n. Hit that with a critical z-score, this is the error of the confidence interval. So if you want the error for the confidence interval, um, using the uh, Minitab software, notice it doesn't tell you that value. However, remember that this error is added and subtracted to the value of x-bar. So when you have these two numbers over here, if you know what they are, you know that the distance from the first number to the second number is in fact twice as big as the error, because the error was subtracted to get the bottom number, and then it was added to get the upper number. So if you take these two numbers right here, and then subtract them, and then chop that answer in half, divide it by two, you will get the value 0 0.00588. All right, this whole procedure uh, is done just as easily on the TI uh, graphing calculator. Uh, it's actually done in the statistics menu, which is the stat button in the middle. So if you press stat, and then move over to the testing menu. Now the testing menu, as you can see, has a bunch of out, um, choices named test. Those are, high, believe it or not, hypothesis tests. Then your confidence intervals begin at option number seven. All right, we're doing exactly what number seven is. You can see seven and eight, those are confidence intervals. One's called the Z interval, the other one's called the T interval. All right, we're com you know, computing a uh, confidence interval using Z scores, which is what this whole procedure was. So I'm gonna choose this option, Z interval. So you hit enter when you're on top of Z interval. And just like Minitab asked you, you know, what do you got for me? Do you got raw data or do you got statistics? Well, we have statistics. So you move it over to stats and hit enter. And notice the inputs change. Finally, we'll do that. And there it goes. And then it picks your brain. What's all the stats? Well, this population standard deviation, 0 0.03. the x bar 0.248 the n is 100 and then notice the confidence level the default is 95 percent as it was in Minitab by the way that's a standard as you're going to learn later on in the course many statisticians don't like to go um, any lower than 95 percent because they don't trust it they don't deem it to be statistically significant so um, that, that's why you'll notice the software programs always uh, have 95% as the default. Um, this is 100, not 10. There it goes. All right, so you go on top of Calculate and hit Enter. And within a blink of an eye, there's your confidence interval, which is the same one as Minitab gave us, which is the same one that the output gives us here using the uh, defining formulas. So as you can see, getting a confidence interval, whether you're using the formulas, it's not so bad, but clearly using Minitab or the TI uh, graphing calculator, uh, you get those answers a lot faster.